Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who at his baptism showed us God's love through humble acts of sacrifice. Our same Lord Jesus Christ invites us and calls us to proclaim and practice that love in our households, our communities, and beyond. We begin our worship today in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 399, The Star Proclaims the King is Here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro is from Psalm 2, the Antiphon from Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with the rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their callings as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for the baptism of our Lord is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6. St. Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am unworthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And when he came up out of the water, Immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today's message is taken from our Gospel reading from Mark chapter 1 with an emphasis on these words. When Jesus came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is our text, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. At the baptism of Christ, the Christian is faced with a series of confounding images. Indeed, to the untrained reader, it might appear as though verses 9 through 11 directly contradict what is said in verses 4 through 8, where our text begins. When John appears preaching in the wilderness around the Jordan, he does so to proclaim, in his own words, After me comes one who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, given the outlandish figure that John cuts in his camel hair garbs and the borderline fanatic zealotry with which he urges his baptism of repentance, you might not think that this call would be such a tall order. Surely, when the Messiah appeared, he, with his mighty countenance, would far eclipse the lowly image of John, the prophet. And yet, in these opening verses of Mark's Gospel, the very first thing that we see the Messiah do is to submit himself to a baptism for sinners un under the uncertain hand of his cousin, the baptizer. Here in Mark chapter 1, we see the mighty become lowly, while the lowly are exalted. The sinless takes the place of the sinners. And at this humiliating sight, the very voice of God the Father echoes out to confirm this is, in fact, his plan by saying, You are my beloved Son, with you, I am well pleased. Yet, to you listening today, most of whom already know the old, old story, these words might not be altogether that surprising. After all, we are already two sermons deep into our series delving into this new guiding statement for our congregation. We have already talked about how it is that this congregation proclaims and practices the love of God, but today we stop to consider. Which is that love that this congregation proclaims and practices? Mark 1 invites us to ponder, how does God show love? Well, friends, this morning, I want you to keep the image of Christ in the Jordan firmly fixed in your minds as I share with you briefly another story. Though this story is fictional, I do feel that it nonetheless illustrates the love which is so on display in Mark 1 quite poignantly. The story, it might surprise you to learn, is taken from Marvel Comics' 2012 superhero epic, The Avengers. The Avengers, to those of you who are uninitiated, centers around a group of superheroes that must band together to save the world from the looming threat of interdimensional invasion. However, the early conflict of the film revolves not around fighting the bad guys, but rather between two of its heroes, Captain America and Iron Man. As these two learn to work together, the tension between their beliefs and their personalities comes to a head, and Captain America eventually lays out exactly why, that he, why it is that he feels Iron Man is not worthy to be called a true hero. He says, the only thing that you really fight for is yourself. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play. You're not the guy to lay down on the wire and let the other guy crawl all over you. Iron Man, of course, takes these words to heart, and with, without spoiling anything for you all who have not seen it, he spends the next eight or so movies proving the captain wrong. He does so by giving of himself and becoming a real hero. 
point of the story is this. Heroism, as we are all accustomed to in some form or another, is defined by sacrifice. In giving of one's self for the sake of others, the character of a person is revealed plainly. It is precisely this type of heroism I pose to you today, which is on display in Mark chapter 1 at the River Jordan. For here Jesus humiliates himself in partaking of the baptism of John despite himself having nothing to repent of. This is to say that when the Christian enters the water, when the Christ enters the water, clean of all sin, he comes out positively filthy. He comes out stained with the sin of all who have entered in before him. No more than that, he comes out carrying on himself the sins of all humanity, all peoples in all times and in all places. This is how the heroism of the Christ is defined. It is this action which inspires the voice from the clouds, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the act which is pleasing to God the Father, that God the Son would willingly be made low by rendering himself guilty of all sins which he himself did not commit. This, you see, is how God shows not just heroism, but how he communicates his love for us. He does it through sacrifice. Jesus Christ, the Messiah made sin-bearer in the Jordan, becomes for us the very icon of God's love for man. As Jesus proceeds from the water, he lays himself down on the wire for us, by by being carried up, first into the wilderness, then to all of Judea, and then finally up still into Jerusalem and to Calvary. In the Gospel of Mark, we see the singular act of God's love carried out across 16 chapters. It is all one long passion reading as Jesus continually sacrifices, sacrifices himself until at the cross... His sacrifice is complete. The hero of this story would give his life for our sake. Jesus in the baptismal waters stands in solidarity with sinners. He reveals by his humble display that the love of God is for you and for me and for all people. And now, bought with his sacrifice, you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are remade new and clean to carry his love to those who have not heard. That love which, pro- that love which to proclaim and practice is the very same love which flowed out of the River Jordan. It is a sacrificial love. It is a love which humbles the mighty, a love which exalts the lowly, a love that acts entirely without self-interest, a love which concerns itself entirely with others. This, dear friends, is how our God loves. And so, by extension, it must be how his church loves. It is how you have been made to love. And yet, though we have all received this high and mighty calling, we know that we are but poor and pale imitators of Christ. I want you to ask yourself this morning, when was the last time the love of God shone through you? When was the last time that you gave freely of yourself to help your neighbor in need? What was the last thing that you did to willfully make yourself decrease so that someone else, a friend, a neighbor, or even an enemy, might increase. As you ponder these things, I urge you to cling to these kinds of works, dear Christians. For these works are not your doing, but rather they are the love of God in Christ Jesus in you and through you. Baptized into his name, you partake of his love, and so you are now given to share that love with others. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Friends, this body of believers worships her God by following in his example, by giving ourselves as living sacrifice, by loving as he first loved her. You, as followers of our Lord Jesus, are called to make the sacrifice play, to love in a fundamentally different way than the world around you shows love. Jesus says in John chapter 15, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Therefore, dear friends, let us then love boldly. For our Messiah, our hero, our champion, our savior has been lifted up to make plain the love of God to all peoples. He has done the heavy lifting. The sacrifice has already been rendered. Washed clean from your sins, may you bear witness to the work of your God, who came into your world, who took your sins, who suffered and died for your sake, and who now lives and reigns for your salvation. May your life reflect the radiance of his mighty love to your neighbor, that they too might see the goodness of a God who sacrificed all things for them, a God who loves them. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in the same Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Together we make confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son together, is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, in the Jordan River you revealed Jesus to be your beloved Son. Lord, by mighty work and wonder, reveal your grace to us. Lord, strengthen all those who have been baptized, especially those who have been baptized recently, with your heavenly protection. Lead them to find their true identity in you as your beloved sons and daughters. Lord, by mighty work and wonder, reveal your grace to us. Lord, comfort all those who are suffering in grief this day. Console them with the sure and certain hope that just as we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, by mighty work and wonder, reveal your grace to us. Lord, bless all pastors, church planters, missionaries, and servants in your church who proclaim your word and administer your sacraments. Embolden them to seek and to save the lost and to bring those who have strayed back into your fold. Lord, by mighty work and wonder, reveal your grace to us. Lord, 
Place your hand of healing upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering this day. Most especially do we lift up before you Jerry and Jean Albers, Jean Antilla, Pat Ballou, Sybil Cole, Linda Gantz, Riley Kirkey, Nancy Seitz, Wilma Wampler, Don Weaver, Joe Ziegler, Tom Zimmerman, Dave Beck, Wanda Bullhorst, Tim Crouch, Reverend Jeff Geisler, Ursula Hassan, Nancy Ragsdale, the mother of Brad Ragsdale, Paul Walrod, the father of Lorraine Woodworth, and Lynn Byerly, the mother of Christian Schuler, as well as all those we name now in our hearts. Have mercy upon them and lead them on the path to health according to your good and gracious will. Lord, by mighty work and wonder, reveal your grace to us. Lord, we commend all these things to you in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.